aesthetics. The device's aesthetics are superb. The high screen to body ratio makes the screen appear seamlessly integrated. The display is a 5.5 inch 1080p OLED panel featuring a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It boasts high brightness and incredibly vivid color saturation, making it appear slightly reddish in videos, though it's not as red in actual viewing. Powering it is the G2 Gen 2 chipset, whose performance is quite comparable to the 8 Gen 2, just marginally less potent, yet significantly more powerful than the 865. Its performance is certainly adequate for your needs. With this chipset, playing below PSP is pointless. PSP games like God of War run at 10x resolution with no issues. Indeed, that resolution becomes rather meaningless, as its 4 times resolution already pushes the display to its limit. Anything beyond that merely serves to increase power consumption without additional benefit. However, playing PS1 era games on this 5.5 inch 16 by 9 screen is an absolute feast for the eyes. Furthermore, this device can comfortably manage PS2 games. Both God of War titles can be smoothly played at 3 times the original resolution. At 3x resolution with smooth gameplay, however at 3.5x resolution, some more intricate scenes might still experience a few frame drops, indicating it doesn't maintain consistent performance across all complex scenarios. Devil May Cry 3 also performs flawlessly at 4 times the resolution, maintaining smooth gameplay without any loss of frame rate. Moreover, even the notoriously challenging Valkyrie Profile game can be smoothly enjoyed at a resolution three times higher than its original. Now let's discuss the PS2 emulation challenge. Each time I bring up PS2 emulation, I'm compelled to feature this poorly optimized game, Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Cerberus. This dreadful game truly has terrible optimization. Previously, when I played it on an 865 device, many scenes lagged like a slideshow, even at 1x resolution. I initially believed it was due to insufficient performance, but then I tested it on the G2, Gen 2. With the G2 Gen 2 chipset, it's still the exact same situation. At 1x resolution, it's barely playable, and in some areas, the frame rate even dips to 50. That's just insane. This crappy game might as well not be played. Lastly, for PS2 games, how does this chipset really measure up against the 8th Gen 2? Let's conduct a test. Sticking to our usual method, we'll head over to the flowing corridor in God of War 1. We'll set it to 5x resolution, ensuring both devices run below maximum frame rates, so we can accurately gauge the performance difference. The G2 Gen 2 achieves a frame rate of about 53 frames per second. The 8th Gen 2 conversely performs at approximately 51 to 52 frames per second. This reveals a negligible difference of merely 1 or 2 frames between the two chipsets, essentially rendering their performance in this specific context quite similar. This means that for PS2 emulation, the G2 Gen 2 and the 8 Gen 2 are pretty much identical. This device also handles 3DS games with no problem at all, allowing almost every game to run smoothly at a crisp 4x resolution.
But if we're discussing the ultimate test for emulation, I must present this poorly optimized game, Monster Hunter Stories. Its optimization is extremely poor. From the very beginning, in the grassy areas, you'll barely achieve around 25 frames per second even at 1x resolution, rendering it completely unplayable. With the exact same conditions, the 8 Gen 2. The 8 Gen 2 performs significantly better, generally maintaining around 55 frames per second. Therefore, it appears that when it comes to emulating 3DS games, the 8 Gen 2 greatly outperforms the 7202. Let's take advantage of Joe not being here to secretly try out the 7820. My goodness, it took me at least two whole minutes just to enter the scene, and the frame rate immediately drops drastically. Drops to the single digits, barely 5 frames per second. It's completely unacceptable. Of course, this particular game's poor optimization is solely a problem with the game itself, so you might as well not play such a poorly developed game. However, when it comes to 4H games, this device proves to be quite capable. It is somewhat regrettable that the memory configuration, specifically the 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, is a bit limited. The 8GB of RAM, in particular, will ultimately hinder this device from reaching its full potential when playing Nintendo Switch games. Nevertheless, even with these limitations, it can still manage to run a fair number of other titles quite smoothly. Regarding Nintendo Switch games, what's the actual performance difference between this chipset and the 8 Gen 2? We can certainly put that to the test. For our game comparison, we'll opt for the highly acclaimed Breath of the Wild. It's imperative that we run Breath of the Wild at a 2K resolution. The reason for such a high resolution is to ensure that both devices are operating below their maximum frame rates during our comparison. If they both hit the max, we can't see which is stronger. At 1080p and 1.5k quality, this device can maintain 30 FPS in the early game, which is very impressive. When we push it to 2k resolution, the frame rate stays at around 22 FPS. Let's examine how the 8 Gen 2 performs under the identical conditions. Surprisingly, the 8 Gen 2 actually clocks in 2 frames slower. However, given it's merely a difference of about 2 frames, it might be attributed to a margin of error. Nonetheless, this observation clearly indicates that the G2 Gen 2 is fully comparable to, if not superior, to the 8 Gen 2 when it comes to Nintendo Switch emulation, perhaps even having a slight, has a slight edge. In conclusion, the 2 PG2 is truly a well-rounded device that excels in all aspects. Aside from its somewhat limited RAM, there are virtually no flaws. Its performance is also exceptionally robust. The G2 Gen 2 chipset is nearly on par with the 8 Gen 2, and priced at $13.99, it offers more for the same price compared to the 2P5, yet the product line is quite perplexing. The 2P G2 is a great device that does everything well, but they just had to release the 2P6 at the same time. The 2P6 has a similarly stylish and high quality design, the screen is upgraded to a 120Hz high refresh rate, and the chipset is upgraded to the 8 Gen 2. The battery is larger, an all-around upgrade. For the same memory config, the price difference isn't big, only 100 win more than the 2 PG2, plus a 12 GB RAM, 256 GB storage option is available. Doesn't that put it in direct competition with the 2 PG2? It'll just cannibalize its own products. That's confusing. Are consumers really that gullible? If it were me, I wouldn't unveil the 2 P6 yet. I'd let the 2 PG2 sell for 3 to 5 months, then spring a surprise undercut with the 2 P6. As for what device to release, I'd systematically exploit you all.